Now that question actually has, can be answered or it can be asked in two ways. And I would say no matter which way you ask it, the answer is yes, the Bible does give an answer. Uh, the first way you might ask that question was, why is it evil at all in this world? Now the Bible is very straightforward about that. Uh, Genesis 1 through 3, Romans 5, 12 says, you know, as by one man sin entered into the world. So that's one, one way we answer the question and say, well, yes, there's an answer. Now, we remember that when we answer that question, it may be that not everybody likes that, <laughs> the response, the answer. But it, that doesn't mean that the Bible doesn't have an answer. And uh, the second way you might ask that question, which I think is the more problematic for us, not that it can't be answered, and that is, why does God allow so much individual pieces of evil uh, in this world? Well, I would argue that answer rests in basically two areas. One is what I call a creation order. That when God creates the universe, he, he creates the universe in such a way that uh, it's, it, it makes it possible for him to put true moral agents within that created order. Now, if you're going to do that, you've got to have rules, so to speak, by which the order works. Uh, if you're really going to make this individual a true moral agent, uh, such as, well, I would argue that's man. We could talk about angels, but we won't talk about angels. We'll just talk about man. That you can now have two minds, as it were, two different kinds of minds in the universe. You have the, the necessary mind, who is God, whose mind cannot be overruled, whose plan cannot be overruled. But within that, what do we have? We have a contingent mind, a real mind, uh, a mind that can think, a mind that can project, uh, a, a mind that can make judgments, but also a mind that can make real choices. Now, if you start looking at it that way and realize, well, if you're going to be able to make a real choice, uh, then that would mean that you'd have to at least have the possibility of things not going well. Real choices only, only exist if, one, you have at least two possibilities. And each possibility must have a corollary consequence. So if you think of it in that way, then you say, well, then a real choice, like in the garden, the tree, eat and you die, don't eat and you live, See, there's two choices, each have corollary consequences. Now, this created order allows for those, even the bad choices, to work their way out into history. And then, well, why doesn't God intervene? Because God respects history. If, and so you say, well, God ought to intervene over here, okay? Uh, so, if God intervened over here, that would mean it never happened. And we always say, oh, that's, that's a worse evil than this. Well, we do that by comparison. So I often say, well, why don't you think about it this way? Let's say that the worst evil in the world is X plus 4. It's the worst evil you can imagine. <clears throat> and you say, okay, but God's not going to allow that to happen. Okay, so if that's the case, then X plus 4 never becomes a part of human, human's experience. So now by comparison, what's the worst evil? Uh, it's X plus 3. And oh, uh, now we don't want God to let that one happen. So he does X plus three, never happens. And you see where this goes until finally you end up with having no, no suffering, no evil at all. And as uh, Alvin Plantinga has pointed out, that is obviously not a feasible world. If it would have been, that's the world we would have had. And something would not have been as it is today.